At 10 a.m., the Syria train, as it's known, arrives at Kazan station to a welcome with military honors. Its 20 cars are packed with military equipment, patriotism and pride, sporting trophies brought back from Syria by Russia's armed forces. Including tanks, armored vehicles and even mini-labs for making chemical weapons. They allegedly belong to IS terrorists. Kazan is one of a total of 60 stops on the tour. The Russian people have to see this train, so they'll want to stop the misery that's sadly at home in other corners of the world, and to understand Russia's role in the battle against international terrorism. Olga Markilova understands all too well what that battle can mean. She lives in Nichnikamsk, 170 kilometers from Kazan, alone with her daughter. Her husband, Dmitry, was killed in Syria in 2017. She sees the train from the perspective of her personal tragedy. I see nothing in this train but death. Because of the military involvement, I've lost my husband. The Russian Defense Ministry gives an official toll of 116 Russian troops killed in Syria. Officially, Olga's husband, Dmitry, is not among them. Alongside the regular troops were several private combat units from Russia. Olga's husband belonged to one of them. It wasn't just 10 or 20 soldiers from Russia there, but thousands and very many died. When Olga sees her videos of the trophy train, she expresses just one wish. If I'd known, I might have gone to Kazan and would have hounded down those generals. Officially, Russia prohibits combat missions by private companies. Human rights activists speak of cynical double standards. We meet up with one of the activists on the outskirts of Moscow. Sergei Kravenko heard about Olga's case. He provides support for the relatives of the private Russian fighters who were killed in Syria. Nowhere are the dead fathers or husbands listed as soldiers. The Syrian war has two faces. The first one shows us Russia's official war on terrorism. The second, hidden one, is not meant to be seen. Russia must expose this second face and explain the nebulous structures in Syria. The death of Olga's husband is one chapter in the story of Russia's involvement in Syria that the trophy train and its initiators prefer to keep under wraps. Instead, the guides talk about Russia's successes. Moscow has been assisting the Syrian military in its fight against ISIS since 2015 and helping to keep President Bashar al-Assad in power. Many visitors support this. Our boys are helping the degraded Syrian people. How? Successfully, they say. What does Russia have to do with Syria? Well, it's a substantial help for the country, so it can return to, well, what's it called? Peace? We have to show children weapons of war so they know war is bad. The families of some of the victims from private armies are fighting for some form of compensation. Among them, Olga Markilova and her daughter. They get nothing from the Russian state, even though Dmitry was fighting alongside regular Russian troops against the same enemy in Syria. Of course Russia's fighting international terrorism, but why isn't there anything for the survivors? Our government sends humanitarian aid to Syria. Why aren't we getting any humanitarian aid? We've lost our breadwinner. For two months, the Syria train traveled across Russia from west to east. The Russian military portrayed it as a symbol of success in its war on terrorism. But this battle has left many questions unanswered. <laughs>